I've never been practical. I, I, I never had a, a strict plan. I never took current steps like to try to approach the right labels or to try to, 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 to make the right move. I just uh, uh, follow my, uh, my music taste. There were a couple of points. Uh, the first moment uh, in 2005, it was the moment when my first vinyl was released. And the second moment, and the most important one, I had I have a collaboration with a, with a guy from the UK, his name is Neville Watson. We just made a track for fun, uh, totally different from the, from the sound of, of the moment. And by, by chance it was picked up from, from a very good label, Rush Hour. Uh, it was very successful, it sold out very well and that was the reason I made uh, contact with, uh, with some big artists like, like Josh Wink for example. So the third moment I would say uh, uh, last year I was picked up as uh, uh, number 5 top life act according to Resident Advisor, that's uh, the bible in the electronic music world. So that was, that was a, quite a big achievement considering I'm not a, a super commercial artist compared to the other colleagues in this, uh, in this chart. It feels great when you see that your, uh, your music idol is playing your tracks. A couple of weeks ago I played with DJ Hell. I remember when I was a kid I was, uh, I was listening to his mixes or uh, his productions. I, I never thought I'm gonna meet this guy and uh, we were playing together in, uh, in a club called Sunkeys in Manchester. It's a pretty, pretty cool location. We were together in a taxi and was like, wow, I'm a big fan of your music, so that's uh, it's a great feeling. When I, when I produce music, I, 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 try to, I try to have an idea that stands behind the, the track or, or EP or album. I think that producers or label owners, they, they, they manage to see through and they, that, that's why I have actually really, really good recognition amongst the industry and maybe still I'm not a superstar in the, in the regular world because the more professional ear could catch what I, what I try to achieve. And it's not so easy for, for, uh, for not uh, trained ear. That's why people uh, call it uh, life PA or life personal appearance, because there is no definition of what is life act. You can play a big CD, you can have a coffee and sit on the, in front of the people and that's, that's also life personal appearance, right? You play your music. But also you can be a musician, you can play an instrument, you can do whatever you like. So there is no really a definition of what could be an electronic music life act. My approach is a little bit more improvisational, so I sacrifice the music quality. I, I, I do a lot of mistakes when I play. My levels are not right, but uh, I need to have fun. I'm, I'm tired. I play every, every weekend I'm in two different countries. Every weekend I have like uh, between five or six flights. So I have to keep it intuitive to myself. And I, I try to improvise and that keeps me awake. So that's what I do. I, I try to create music on, on stage, from scratch, from zero. Of course I play my kind of big tracks. People expect that. But then I try to, uh, to surprise myself and, and everybody. Which made me think the, the human aspect is, uh, is very important. But uh, but something we might forget is that uh, when you when you have a when you have a machine which looks nice, when you have something which uh, is much more hands-on and looks nice, it's, it inspires you and uh, it's, it's fun. And uh, for so many years, I've just been producing on a computer with, with a mouse and building blocks and connecting wires virtually. I forgot about the fun factor. And the fun factor is very important. It's uh, making music should be fun, also, right? Since I arrived in China, I heard very, very good things. The thing is, I've, I've never, I'm so concentrated in, uh, in my studio work, and I'm, I'm not that much of a party guy. So I'm, I don't really uh, do my research. I don't know the venues. The first time I played in, in uh, Belka in Paran Bar, that's one of the best clubs in the world, I didn't hear anything about the place. So. That's, that's me. So the same with Lola. Uh, I didn't know anything about it and when I arrived in Shanghai, everybody was like, wow, it's, it's a great place, you're gonna, you're gonna have a good time there. Yeah.